Okay, so carrying on from where we just left off, we've just installed a whole load of stuff. If we quickly go and look on the DevOps Tools GitHub repo, so these links are in the description. Make sure that you've done the previous parts of the course to make sure that you're in the right place. We just looked at the service setup uh, readme file and we just followed through with this. One thing we didn't actually do was just check that some of this stuff is installed. So we installed wget. Ah, there we go. Looks like we got disconnected. Right. So one thing we didn't do was check that all of the like, Ansible wget curl got installed. So if we just write wget, we can see we're getting all the command kind of help back. Oh, git. Um, unzip. You know, all of these things. Pip. Yeah. So all of this stuff has been installed, ready for us to use. Um, now, in this next section, we're going to install Packer. We're going to. We've already got our AWS CLI working. So let's come back and go into the Packer directory. And this is what we need to do. So I've actually already done this um, on a previous recording that broke, <laughs> which was a little annoying. But if you run through this, um, we're looking in the Packer directory today to install and set up Packer. Um, and we did actually already, I'll just make sure because it's been a day, just make sure that the AWS credentials that I've already added in, that you would have added in as well, still work. Yes, they do. Lovely. Okay, so now we can move on. So into the Packer directory. Um, yeah, a couple of things here. So we're going to use AWS CLI to hold the access to secret keys. We already did that in the previous video. If you haven't, check out the video, go back and do that. Um, you're going to need to install Packer. i would take care of that for you. Um, we're going to do it on Ubuntu 20.04. You can pick a different one. That's the one I'm using. Um, and we, there's a list of required packages again. So this is the previous one. Yes, yeah, so just go back. Have a look at those if you haven't done it already. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is clone the repo. And then git clone. Now I already have a copy. It already exists. So you'll get the update and then go into Packer as well. And then let's go through here. So we've in the pack directory, we're going to pull down this zip file. There it is. So we've already, I've already installed unzip, unzip um, and you probably will have as well if you followed my instructions. You don't need to do that. This is just for someone looking at this um, outside of maybe the work that we've done. Okay, so you unzip packer. And then we're going to move. So if I'm in this directory now, and I run Packer, you can find it. Actually, yeah, it's not going to help because I <laughs> did previously install it as well. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to move it, the Packer binary, to the user local bin directory. And by doing that, it puts it into the path that everybody has available to them. So if we look at echo dollar path. Can see here that in between these colons we've got a directory so user local bin is this one so what what Linux does is if it's looking for something it will try these different directories in the environment variable of dollar path first and if it can't find it it will give you an error and say sorry can't find it so what we do is we move packer into the user bin local directory it's available to everybody because that's in everybody's environment path variable and then anyone can just run the packer command and have access to it so that's what we've done, we've moved it there. So the next thing to do is just to delete this packer zip file. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so now we're left with this file. So if we just have a look at the file quickly, the first thing it does is a plugin. And when you run it for the first time, like do a, a packet in it to initialize the stuff, you'll see that this plugin will download the Amazon stuff. And that's what tells packer to talk to, what it will tell packer how to talk to Amazon because obviously Amazon and Azure and GCP are different and if you're going to be doing it in Azure there'll be an Azure plugin to download. Um, some information about the actual um, source, so we're giving it the name of the AMI name will be London IAC 01 so if I do another one it could be a 2, maybe you want to call it latest, you know there's a load of things you can do. Um, this is the actual image name that we're using so this is an AWS thing, um, you can change the name of the image uh, asterisks are wildcards which is handy um, if you did want to use a different image then you have to change this owner 
Um, there's some ways to do it. You have to sort of run these commands that pull back information about the different images and stuff. And in there is the owner information. Um, I'm not going to go into detail in this course, but you can just look it up online and find that. Okay, um, we're going to connect as Ubuntu, and then we just get into the build section. So the provisioner, this is what was already in the Packer demo, and then I've added this inline section. So what it's going to do is it's going to echo out to say it's installing the required packages, it's going to wait 30 seconds, it's going to update the repos, and then it's going to do an upgrade for the operating system, then it's going to um, install wget curl and git, because that's what I want. And, and maybe as you go through this, you'll realize that we missed something out. So we'll, we'll do a, a, another release, including some other software. You can get it to run Git clones and configure software as well for you. So it's quite good. Right, the next up is we do the packet init. It just initializes it. So I have already done this. What you'll get back is it will tell you that the plugin's been basically downloaded and initialized for Amazon. FMT, it's like a formatting check validate as well which like validates the file configuration is valid lovely right so now we're going to be able to run the packer build command on our HCL file and it's going to run so if we pop over to AWS and we just refresh it in a couple of seconds because I've got a filter on for running so that's the AMI ID of the image it's going to temporarily spin up um, and it's got an instance ID so once that's ready we'll see that here it'll pop in but if I take yeah so there we go so now this has popped in this is initializing it's going to take a few minutes to run through this um, I think it takes about seven minutes in total um, so that's what it's going to do is it's going to spin up once it's available and it's finished initializing it's then going to install all of the software that we asked it to and do the update. Once it's finished the update, it will um, close the image down and then it will start up a, it will create an AMI image for us out of that and then it will also create a snapshot of that image. So if we come back to the notes, come down here and if we just cut and paste these two links. So we won't need these just yet, but we will need them in the future. So open one. We'll open the other so what you can do is these will sit here every time you use packer to create an image these will now sit here forever so what you can do is you come in and delete the snapshots you don't need and then basically deregister the AMI IDs and then they'll get discarded and they won't be associated with your account anymore and then you can't use them okay so this is still running once that finishes initializing it will then go on and carry on with this section ah here we go so it looks like it's already doing the update. It's got up because it's scrolling down. Yeah, so it's doing the update. That's quite handy. That won't take long. So now it's waiting for the instance to stop. So if we come here, it'll probably disappear from this view. Yeah, while it's now powering off, and then it will eventually terminate. So it's going to have to stop and then if we have a look in the it's not there yet but what it will do once it's shut down it will then create the AMI image for us so it's quite a versatile packer you know you can use it to create instances uh, sorry AMI images uh, you can customize those images which is quite handy so you can have one set of software on a particular AMI image, it just speeds up the whole delivery process. You can do a pull of a repo, configure your software. Um, you, know, you can even use it in testing, sort of CI/CD pipelines. It doesn't take that long. It, you know, it would create a new server for you, start it up, pull down your code, and then run a series of tests. Um, there are other ways to do that sort of CI/CD process, uh, but that's that's one. So still no images, so it hasn't shut down completely. Have a quick look up while we're here. We scroll back up. Top. Yeah, so that was our message installing required packages. And then it goes off and does the update first. So this is just a warning. It's just about, um, yeah, 
I gave it options to ignore this, so that's why it's just a warning. So it's going to upgrade 18, and then it does the upgrade of those ones, and then it comes back. And then we've got curl, we've got git, so it's doing the installation of the stuff that we're needing. Okay, so let's have a look here again. Still not there. There won't be snapshots because there's no AMI image yet. Let's take a couple of minutes. It won't be too long. Let's refresh this one. Like I say, it takes somewhere between five and eight minutes. Maybe yours will be quicker. It'd be quite funny if, um, while we're here, for me the weather today was quite nice. It's currently about 15 degrees. Time is seven o'clock, just after. So maybe put something in the message about how the weather is on this day when you're watching this video for me. It might be quite funny for me to read. Um, and everyone else will be going, what are you doing? And they won't have they won't have listened to like 12 minutes in on this video, so it might be quite funny. Anyway, let's see if anyone leaves me a message. Okay, still no images yet. Oh, here we go. Right, so terminating the source AWS instance. That's still doing stuff, which is good. Refresh this. Still not there. I think once it's terminated the AWS instance, it then can finish creating the AMI. Ah, there we go. Right, so, ah, just made a big mistake. So what we need to do, open them up in West Virginia, we need to go to London, and we can see that we have our AMI image, and Again, if we change from Virginia again to London, we can see we've got a snapshot. So that's just a little gotcha there, even I was not on it. So that's cool. Um, right, so we have our MI image, we have our snapshot. What I'm going to do now is just add this to my repo. So I'm actually honest with a different user here, but I'm going to add it anyway. So if we go, go to file, a readme and edit the file. I am going to change this so it's CDB. It changes to my new one. So this is the one I'll use going forward. Um, it's private, so you probably won't be able to use it. So I'll just save that and then I'll merge that in later. And you'll see the update. You can see the AMI update has changed, which is good. Right, so quickly go back to the file, the packer. I don't think there's anything else we were going to do. This is it. Yeah, we should now have um, an AWS, AMI, um, in, uh, an AMI image. That we're now going to use when we download Terraform in like the next, um, the next lesson. When we download Terraform, we're going to use this AMI image to build out our data center. So this is what we're going to use to build on all our servers with. So yeah, um, don't forget to subscribe. If you're here now and you haven't looked at the other videos, go through them and then that'll get you into the right plot, right place now to be joining us. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.